Fine. Yeah. Hey guys, and today we're going to do the third episode of the, of Shakespeare with Kids, and this one is about the tragedy the tragedy of King King Richard the Third. So this is scene one if you wanted to know an act one. So we are joined by my mum. Hello. And my cousin, Lona. Hello. So I'm going to read out a passage called Now is the Winter of Our Discontent. It's some sort of like speech. And it's quite nice actually. Another one of Shakespeare's specialities. So I'll start. Now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by the sun of York, and all the clouds that loud upon our house in the deep bosom of the ocean buried. Now are our brows bound with victorious wreaths, our bruised arms hung up for monuments, our stern alarums changed to merry meetings, our dreadful marches to, to delightful measures. Grim visaged war hath smoothed his wrinkled foot, mm. and now, instead of mourning barbed steeds to fright the souls of fearful adversaries, he capers nimbly in a lady's chamber to the lascivus, not sure what that means, I'll ask later, pleasing mm. of a lute. But I, that am not shaped for sportive tricks, nor made to count an amorous-looking glass, I, that am rudely stamped and want love's majesty to strut before a wanton, ambling nymph, I, that am curtained of this fair proportion, cheated of feature by dissembling nature, Deformed, unfinished, sent before my time into this breathing world, scarce half made up, and that so lamely and unfashionable that dogs bark at me as I halt by them. Why, I, in this weak piping time of peace, have no delight to pass away the time, unless you spy my shadow in the sun and descant on mine own deformity and therefore since i cannot prove a lover to entertain these fair well-spoken days i'm determined to prove a villain and hate the idle pleasures of these days plots have i laid by drunken prophecies libels libels and dreams to set my brother clarence and the king in deadly hate the one against the other as if King Edward be as true, and just as I am subtle, false and treacherous, this day sh- should Clarence closed be mewed up about a prophecy which says that G of Edward's heirs, the murderer, shall be. Dive, thoughts come down to my soul. Here, Clarence comes. Okay. Okay. Lona, would you like to start us off with your first thoughts? You had a chance to read it before. What did you think? Yeah. Um, this one, I believe, is actually harder to decode mm-hmm. than the earlier ones. Yeah. I found this one specifically um, confusing, or, well, not confusing, but tougher to really unravel and yeah. understand. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like it's like a vengeful thing, isn't it? It's not a like a happy love thing, or it's not a it's not a superficial happy emotion. I think it's a, a like a like a mean, uh, angry sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah, he's kind of spiteful. Yes, exactly, yeah. spiteful. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's more interesting and harder to um, sort of admire, maybe. What do you think of it? You know, I think he is, is kind of describing to the audience, well, in this case, yeah, the audience, because it's a play, um, how spiteful he feels to other people and kind of like opening a setting to the play, say, uh, showing the audience how evil he, how evil possibly he is and how annoyed and spiteful he is towards 
King Edward and his brother Clarence. Brother Clarence, right? Yeah. So, do do you think that they, I'm I'm not I don't know enough about the play right now. But do you think? Yeah, do, I was gonna ask you something. Yeah. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh yeah. By the way, bosom means butt. <laughs> Just. Oh wait, no, it doesn't. Bosom does not mean. <laughs> this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> Okay, so Adit just uh, said that. Oh, clarification. Bosom is, is a butt. Bosom is not a butt. Bosom is boobs. Well, I mean, bosom that in Shakespearean times, bosom did not have to. Bosom just meant chest. Like, okay. So Adit, you were talking about um, the fact that it was sort of spiteful, weren't you? Yeah. Do you think that I think he kind of says it also do you think that the reason why he feels that way is because he doesn't have love in his life do you think Shakespeare yeah yeah he doesn't have anything to really make him understand what it's like yeah yeah but he doesn't say why he hates his brother though yeah so he must say it like later on Probably. yeah but like it's apparent from the beginning of the um, the story the play that it's going to be a sort of like revenge a, yeah like a revenge tragedy you know sort of a sort of thing yeah. sort of thing yes so from the beginning of the uh, play we already know what it's going to be about no way that's that's very interesting. I thought I heard some very good um, metaphors in there. Oh yeah, to the, the, to strut before a wanton, wanton ambling nymph. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So I think it means strut by like a nymph is like beautiful in some. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So he's like he he has no love, so he's he kind of dreaming of it. Yeah. So it's like uh, I am determined to prove a villain. And hate the idle pleasures of these days. So I think his brother Clarence has sort of come back after winning a war. And he's being sort of um, angry about it. Because he might not have had the success or the, um, you know, the um, accolades that his brother has had, right? Yeah. Yeah. I also realized that when wait, um, they said, I think somewhere, I can't remember where it was, hmm. but he says, oh yeah, here, why I in this weak piping time of peace have no delight to pass away the time unless to spy my shadow in the sun and descant on my own deformity. Oh, do you think he's like disabled in some way? Yeah, I, I'm not oh sure. Oh my God, yes. Know. Well, I guess the deformity, as he says, could also be um, just his lack of positivity. I'm not sure. Like he feels that he's deformed in his mind rather than a physical yeah, deformity. Yeah, physically. Because he says, like, he mentions how this is a, you know, have no delight to pass away the time. Maybe he feels like he's not like... A normal person and he doesn't have yeah you know yeah. those qualities yeah 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 he doesn't have yeah. pleasure in his life yeah. that's why he will ruin other people's pleasure as well isn't it mm. Mm. really amazing mm. so we understand his motivation we understand what will happen in the story it's it's a brilliant start to the um play isn't it I think we should look at more tragedies and what I was looking to do and you know a little sort of teaser for next time I'm going to try to find a rousing speech right sort of like a go to war kind of thing I think he would yeah because we've done sort of love we've done sort of mean we've done sort of uh, what was the first one we did it's like a acty thingy the life metaphor. about yes met- metaphor for life sort of thing next i'm going to try to find a war like speech maybe from othello or something yeah mm. okay right. okay thanks guys for tuning in if you did i hope you did and see you guys later please subscribe but you don't have to still bye thank you guys bye, bye.